Hey, Samsung. How is it going? I guess I should have checked to see if the microphone was on. Seems like it's on. I've been uh, out in the field collecting some samples, and this is one of them. This is a, uh, a sample from uh, Clear Lake in Ida, Iowa. We were in Iowa visiting some family, and then uh, we decided to, on the trip home, stop at a couple of lakes and collect some samples. So me and my wife and my daughter and my mother-in-law went out and collected these samples. So it was mostly my wife and I that collected the samples. Um, this one I collected from a pier, uh, a public pier, uh, using a plankton net. And uh, so it's mostly stuff that was floating in the water uh, at Clear Lake. Things are going well. Hello, Rod. That is Oscillatoria right there. And this guy that we were just looking at, I guess I should do it from in here where I can actually see stuff, uh, was a type of, yeah, here. That's a uh, pediastrum. One of many pediastrum. Uh, I don't think... Yeah, I don't think Oscillatoria is on there, though. Uh, it's not a diatom. So, it should work for you, but uh, it should only work with diatoms if the links, have, I mean, the links won't work. To, they won't lead to anything. So, uh, that's an Olicosira right there if you wanted to make a link that would actually get people to the diatom. Uh, that's... Oscillatoria, or that's a uh, Holocosira right there. I think it's Holocosira Ambigua. And, uh, this thing down here, another Pediastrum. The bamboo of diet. It's pretty much like bamboo. Uh, this gear looking thing is a, a Pediastrum. They look like uh, little kaleidoscopes. I'm not sure why the music is jumping around in volume all of a sudden. Super loud. Part of their new plan is to make the music super loud all of a sudden for no reason. There's uh, a bunch of green algae in here. I think that's what this stuff that looks like it's in a sack here is. It's, yeah, Pediastrum is the, uh, the ones that look like little kaleidoscopes. And then, uh, so there's some pediastrum, the chloroplasts are missing from it, right there. So you can see each of the cells has like two little uh, horns, if you want, that come off of them. And then there's a bunch of the oligocera all around here. Oh, that's a uh, star astrum right there. It's a type of desmid. Uh, you can see it sort of has like a three, a triangular shaped uh, spaceport. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It's uh, 
sound was going crazy. Maybe I'll just turn off the pretzel rock because it's, it's acting bizarre. If it starts jumping around in volume again, let me know. And uh, I'll just do away with it. Some of this green algae is like past its expiration date. Um, so there's some pe more pediastrum. There's some anabena. And the funny thing is that they, uh, the lake is called Clear Lake, and it is anything but clear. The, the water is kind of like a yellowy brown color. It's filled with diatoms and algae and zooplankton of all kinds. And uh, there's another pediastrum right there. Uh, a link for what, Rod? Yeah, they used to be Clear Lake, exactly. Uh, and the city is called Clear Lake, so they can't just rename it. Oh, yeah, 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 you can share a link, sure. You should be able to do that. Some more different types of pediastrum. Um... This thing right here, that little thing that looks a bit like a necklace or a bracelet, is uh, anabena. <laughs> the stream is now sponsored. Oh yeah, it does look a little bit like Michael Jordan. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's a star astrum. And uh, this thing right here, oops, I grabbed the wrong doodad. Uh, arrow. Does not want to let me pick up my own arrow. Uh, this little thing here that looks like a bracelet is anabena. It's a cyanobacteria. And what's cool about anabena and many of this cyanobacteria that live in lake systems, so it has these cells that are here, um, sort of normal cells. They look like little beads. And then and there's this one, which looks a little bit different than the rest of them. And... If we zoom in, you'll see the cell actually looks different. And um, in algae, when we have a cell that looks different than the rest of the cells, we refer to that as a heterocyst. So hetero just means different, and cyst just means like a cell. Um, so the cell is different than the rest of them that are on this strand. And that's because uh, it's filled with something called uh, nitrogenase, I think it is, uh, which they use to turn nitrogen gas into nitrates that they can then use for food. And this is a nitrogen-fixing cyanobacteria. And it's one of the marvels of nature, actually, because um, before, I don't know, the 1940s, uh, the nitrogen-fixing cyanobacteria were the only ones that could do this. In other words, there's nitrogen gas everywhere. It's 80% of the atmosphere, but nitrogen is a relatively scarce nutrient for plants and for algae. Um, and these nitrogen-fixing cyanobacteria actually found a way to turn nitrogen gas 
into something that's biologically available. Yes, the Haber-Bosch method was the process that they came along. They realized that cyanobacteria could do this, and they basically just replicated, you know, a slightly different approach, but they did the same thing. They took all the nitrogen that was in the gas stage, and then they turned it into ammonium, which we use for fertilizer now. And it really transformed the the um, the farming landscape. And one of the things that's really cool is um, this Haber-Bosch process that happened. Um, if you look at the population on planet Earth before and after the Haber-Bosch process, uh, you can see that the you know we're like approaching eight billion right people on planet Earth. Um, but if we hadn't invented this technique that the cyanobacteria have, there'd be something like 4 billion people on planet Earth. Like, we wouldn't be able to support all the people on planet Earth, which, you know, is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, but we wouldn't have been able to do it without learning how to do this nitrogen fixation process from, basically from the cyanobacteria. They figured it out first. And... Um, there's one of those little, here's your little Michael Jordan uh, star astrums right there. It's another one of them. You can see they actually have three little uh, sort of radiating spines coming out of each half. And then like all the uh, a little bit of a drift on the slide because they don't have a cover slip and there's a fan. Um, like all the desmids, there's sort of like two halves that fit together that are identical on both sides. And so uh, that's star astrum. Yeah, like two tripods that are basically connected. So kind of cool and kind of a cool shape. Um, that's an easy one for me. I see that regularly because sometimes um, these guys, the Pediastrum and Cenodesmus and the Starastrum, their cell walls are made out of cellulose, but they're like uh, often impregnated with um, metals or um, minerals that make them a little bit more resistant to breakdown. And they're not silica walls, but they um, they lend them to basically being preserved in lake sediments. And if you're wondering what this crazy looking thing that kind of looks like a tooth is, um, that's the head of a bosmina, and that's the um, sort of proboscis. It's sort of like its nose. Um, the rest of the organism doesn't look like it's here, uh, but I think that's just the head capsule uh, from a molt of a bosmina. And bosmina always have two little uh, trunk things that stick out. It's kind of cool. I don't know if that... Uh, Tested amoeba is still alive or not. Doesn't look like it's particularly healthy. Looks like it's maybe dead. I don't see any of the pseudopods sticking out, but that's a testate amoeba. Um, that's the, the test and potentially a little bit of what it was eating. I've seen a bunch of the, um, the tests for the testate amoebas in these samples. And I think this little guy is another type of cyanobacteria. This one that's here. So for a lake that they, um, they're trying to keep clear, uh, really it's got a lot of kind of troublesome algae. Chlorella? Uh, this long colony of cool-shaped uh, 
little zigzaggy thing up here. Let's see, oops, I keep pushing the wrong button. This one. Those are diatoms. That is a colony of Fragilaria crotonensis. And um, each one of these little pieces right here, each one of these is a diatom valve or cell, a whole cell. And they're living in attached colonies that look like uh, a blade or something like that, um, all lined up or like a ladder or a vertebra um, or like a rib cage. But each one of those is a, di is a whole diatom and they're living in these long colonies. And um, Fragilaria crotonensis is another diatom, uh, a diatom that usually indicates elevated nitrogen levels. Yeah, like a xylophone, yeah. Um, so found together with nitrogen fixing cyanobacteria, it, it often is the case that the cyanobacteria will um, eat up all the nutrients and then they need to make um, nitrogen for themselves so they build those heterocysts, they start fixing nitrogen, and then um, some of those cells will die and release some of that nitrogen back into the water. And things that, uh, diatoms that specialize on that usually will bloom directly after the cyanobacteria. And when their um, nitrogen gets remineralized, then the diatoms will basically take it up as inorganic nitrogen. So that's pretty cool. another one of these uh... a different type <laughs> nature's pretty neat yeah another testate amoeba I don't know it's got the same shape maybe it's making a new maybe it's making a new um, skeleton maybe that's what's going on in there because um, this is roughly the same shape as this, and it looks like it's putting pieces into the, uh, the skeleton here, right? Isn't that what it looks kind of like, like what's going on? Like it's got some pieces of it? So maybe it was in the process of dividing. And, uh, you know, they get, gotta have a new home to move the other half of the amoeba into when it divides. So it could be that's what they were doing. I don't know what this tangle of stuff is that's right there. Oh, it's more anabena. As you can see, it's got a bunch of those heterocysts. It's all just sort of coiled up around itself. The plankton is pretty neat. And these samples are really kind of cool. Um, there's some, just some old skeletons from Testate Amoeba. Some more Anabena and some more Chlorella. Some more Pediastrum and Starastrum. There you can really see the sort of triangular shape of a uh, star astrum, the desmid, um, in the bottom corner there, this one. Something keeps getting disconnected. My computer's being weird. So I brought the samples back with me, uh, you know, like people are at the hotel and they, uh, they get ice out of the ice machine and then use it to keep their, I don't know, alcohol cold or something. Uh, I use it to keep my algae cold. There's another Desmid, that's a star astrum again. A different kind. That one really only has the two. Uh, it doesn't have a third uh, part sticking off. I think it's a different species. They put the microbe in the ice bucket. No, 
I put the ice in a bag, use the ice bucket to collect the ice, and then I put the ice bag into a little backpack cooler. Uh, the algae was never in the bucket. But, uh, you know, feel free to use it or not use it, I guess. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your ice bucket at the hotel. Also, the algae was already in a uh, sample vial at that point, so you needn't worry about it being directly in there. Oh, there's a tintinid. Yeah. Right there. A little freshwater tintinid. You can still see its little lorica. Oh, is it a tintinid? I think it is. Maybe it's a rotifer, actually. Not positive. I think it's a rotifer. Algae is edible uh, for a lot of organisms, but that doesn't mean you should eat it. You know. Might not be the best thing for you. And that's another giant diatom right there. That's a Cerella. A big one. You can still see all the chloroplasts. Seems like it's doing okay. Uh, that's a girdle view of the diatom. Probably if we asked uh, my student Addison, who's working on the paleo record from this site, she could probably tell us what the species of Cerella is. I have no idea. Um, which one that is. That's the body of a Kydorus right there. See, they have a little tiny snout. Uh, and then it's got a big foot that sticks out the bottom of its body. I, th I think it's dead. You can see a bit of the foot right there. It's got the little spines on the edge of it. that organism doesn't exist anymore, just its skeleton. There's some pieces of copepod in here as well. And last night when we were looking at these samples fresh out of the cooler, uh, there were some copepod noplia swimming around, kind of knocking our samples around. This one's been sitting out since about I don't know, four o'clock or something. So it could be that the everything in it has all the swimmy things maybe already gone. Except for there should be some ciliates in here. Somewhere, hopefully. And a bunch of this algae is still doing fine. Bunch of the diatoms, they don't seem to care. There's a Nopleus molt right there. Right in the middle. That's a copepod Nopleus molt. For freshwater copepod. And there is another Kydorus right there, so I won't zoom into it, but uh, this guy down here is a Kydorus. And there's a bunch of pieces of zooplankton all over in these samples, just bits and pieces of their skeleton. Probably molts from when they were alive in the water. Um, as I mentioned, I collected this with a, uh, a plankton net. I did a couple of vertical toes off of a pier so I could get out in the water a little bit, but it was still only about a meter deep. 
think that is a dinoflagellate hiding right there. So these are Fragilaria crotonensis. This thing over here is an Olicocyra in that box. And that's another testate amoeba doing something, maybe splitting. But I think this thing right here might be a dinoflagellate. Yeah. That looks like the sulcus, or the little thing that they're know the belt that there uh, goes across the midriff and then it looks like it's made of a bunch of plates so tripos I don't know what the uh, you know I don't know anything about the dinoflagellate genera so I'll defer um, I think we saw some ceratium as well when we were looking around last night. I don't think it was alive. I think perhaps it was just the exoskeleton of one. I'm seeing a bunch of these little, like the gills or something from Copapod. The gills, whatever those are. Swimming arms. Another Kaidora skeleton. super long diatom right there. That's a single cell. I can't really even fit it in the box completely, so I'll zoom out a bit. That's a single diatom cell. And then all of these guys over here by the arrow those are each one of these little boxes that you see. Like that's one cell, another cell, another cell, another cell. Each two boxes basically is a cell. And then that's just one diatom right there. I think this is an ulnaria. And these are Alicocyra colonies. It's lots of really nice long Alicocyra colonies in these samples. Something went swimming by. Some more chlorella. So it was really neat to um, be able to share these. Oh, there's a, a long nitsia as well. That's a single cell diatom right there. This like S shaped thing. That's a diatom. That's just one cell. It's a nitsia. It was really nice to be able to share this with uh, with Addison, my grad student, who's been working on the the uh, fossil record from this lake system because um, she never got to actually go out in the field and collect the core. And so um, it was nice that we were able to go out, sort of make a stop, a pit stop, and collect some of this material for her. Um, and then she was super excited today when she was looking through all the, um, the different algae that are in the plankton because um, in the fossil record, none of this stuff exists except for the diatoms, really. That is another dinoflagellate right there. And then eggs of some kind. Yeah, it's a fun sample, and um, just because it's got so many different types of algae all together, you know, the diatoms are in here, but they're just one component of what's actually in the water. And I think that's an important message for um, for Addison to think about because. You know, in the fossil record, we only see the things that preserve. We don't see all of this stuff. There's like a recently alive Copapodnopolis right there. I don't think it's alive anymore. I guess if it moves very quickly, we'll know. But I think it's probably dead. 
It's not jumping around. I don't think that's a molt. I think that's actually a dead body. And there's another Kydoras up here and a bunch of Pediastrum. It's a lot of the same stuff after you've been looking around in it for a while. I feel like it starts to repeat. Some of it's really cool. Anyway, so it was kind of nice to be able to share it with her and then she spent the whole day kind of like looking through live material and stuff kind of crawling around in it. You know, I think it kind of changes your perspective a little. Makes you recognize what, um, how different the living samples are than what we actually see in the fossil record. It's another testate amoeba. Some chlorella. Something's up with those testate amoeba. They all seem to be making little bubbles. Either that's what happens when they die or, or they're all getting ready to make a new clone of themselves. Okay, so this is just one sample. Um, and I feel like we've seen almost everything here. So let's move and look at some other material. So this was collected from the open water of the lake. And, um, you know, so there was, it was as far away from the edge as I could get, really. And, um, I mean, still pretty shallow. I think it was only like a meter, or maybe a little less than a meter deep. So we couldn't really get like way out onto the water. We didn't have time to like rent a boat or a canoe or go kayaking out into the water to collect a sample, but we could have um, if we had a bit, little, little bit more time. You have to run soon, yeah. Your stream is starting very soon, Pacific. So I'm going to just make one more slide. I got a bit of uh, duckweed, and I kind of want to look through that sample um, and see what's in it, if anything. And then um, we're just going to have a short little stream. I don't really have uh, plans to be on here for a super long time. My day was pretty busy. I spent most of it grading. Really my least favorite thing to do for work, but uh, does need to get done. Stupid. anything in this sample even. So this was collected from a little wetland area that's adjacent to um, the main lake. And most of the lake for Clear Lake is now developed into beaches for people's homes. And the little wetlands are all gone, except for the ones that are protected. And so I thought it'd be kind of neat to take a look at those. I don't know if the sample's going to have anything exciting in it, though. Some little wiggly ciliates here or there. Hmm. 
Might need to actually get some of the duckweed to see anything. This looks like debris. Let's see if I can get some of the duckweed. in there. Got a lot of debris. These samples were like from very shallow water right under some cattail. Look like there's much in there except for some little tiny ciliates that are racing around right now. Well, that's an ostracod skeleton, but it's got a bunch of junk growing all over it. If we can't find anything good, we'll just move to a different sample. More pediastrum of a different type. It's mostly just little bits of plant material. Not even really a lot of diatoms or anything in there. Some little tiny ciliates. Let's see about a different sample. Sample hopping. Yeah. I can do whatever I want. If I want to look at the edge, I guess we could. Yeah. Um, also, I got some news that um, right before they left for Spain, our friends um, Hannah and Radio Joe collected some material for me some river diatom samples and um, I think some from the actual ocean over there, Puget Sound area. And I think they're gonna send it to me. So I might also have that to take a look at sometime soon. That should be pretty interesting. <laughs> Sample number three. Let's see. There's a mud sample. There's a bit of this uh, material that got scraped and some debris. Let's maybe just look at the mud sample and see if there's anything in it. So it's like just from the surface of uh, the wetland area. See if we can get any critters or whatever. They might still be alive in the mud. In, uh, in science language, when stuff lives on the mud surface rather than on rocks or on plants, they're called epipelon. Pelon is our scientific word for the mud surface. So these would be epipelic organisms if we were to find anything good in there. Let's 
not just like plant debris. We'll see. And probably there'll be some of the stuff that was in the plankton should be in here as well, but maybe, maybe not. So there's some oscillatoria. And we did see a little bit of oscillatoria. We're already seeing some of the ciliates. It's one of these little crazy guys spinning around. That's not the current, that's actually twisting itself. Oh, there's some big ciliates in here crawling around as well. Some of our favorites. A gastro trick right there. Some of the old regulars. See, there's a big ciliate crawling around, a bunch of them. They're a bit too fast. little spirally guy. I didn't really get a chance to look at these at all. They're pretty cool. Giant ciliates and the smaller ciliates. I think that one is in the Euplodes. The little guy, not the big one. It's a bit more like a worm, but it's not. Bunch of cool little guys in here crawling around. Lacrimaria. It's one of my favorites. There's one in here. They have a long, stretchy neck and a tail. And they can whip it out around and go get food with it. And pull it back towards their neck, which is where their mouth is. Wait, maybe it wasn't like Romaria, maybe it's the other one. Yeah. This one's head doesn't quite spin as quite as far. Doesn't stretch quite as much. It's a sort of ribbon shaped neck. Uh, but it has little stingers that can come out and basically grab prey and pull it towards its mouth. Let's see if I can find my book. gave it to my wife and now I don't know where it is. He did go south. Thanks, Will. I'll see if I can find him. Oh, it's still here. It hasn't gotten very far. I 
It's just rooting around in the debris looking for something to eat. Dileptus, I think is what it was called. They are pretty neat. Yeah, Dileptus, that's what this is. Got it. So that's like Dileptus. It's a little silly. It. And we've seen him eat before um, on the stream. And uh, the part that's wiggling around is sort of think of it like an elephant's trunk. And it's right over top of the actual like mouth hole, um, which they can kind of expand open and stuff things in. Hey, Devil and Mrs. J, did you see that? Um, I want to show you this. I did something really cool. I got these like little shout outs, right? Um, MRSJ was yours, right? But look what happens. Anytime anybody says, um, I think it's devil. Is that right? Yeah, anytime anybody says devil, <laughs> it pops up with a little emote I made of your, um, some of your artwork. You can see it's just searching around inside this old carcass. There's all kinds of secret words um, on my stream now that, uh, yeah it'll bounce or pop up. Um, all kinds of things will happen when you, when you type stuff into chat, it will just automatically like make emotes pop and bounce around on the screen. Secret words, basically, that I've built in. It's pretty cool. So if it pulls its face out far enough here, we can actually see this part is its trunk that it's waving around, and its mouth is actually located right at the base of that, right in here. There, you can see it's like a little fold right in here. There it is. That's its mouth. That little bit right there, and it can kind of like fold open and suck things in. Um, and like stinging jellyfish, it has like a little things that can actually retract and pull uh, prey into its body. And when it happens, it's very crazy. It's pretty neat. My USB is acting weird. Just unplugging things and plugging them back in. All right, let's go look around. That dileptus is really cool. I'm excited we found some of that in here. Oh, there's another little guy wiggling around. What's this? It's another dileptus, I think. Or is it an actual lacrimaria? Because that one actually looks like it has a longer head. Oh no, it's another dileptus. It's a little trunk. It's not actually like whipping it out all the way. These things are super cool. So it's just, it's hiding inside of this pile of stuff here. So you can't see its whole body. These little benthic organisms are, you know, they're tiny. And, um,. That's a collapse right there. Those are two little collapse. 
those are sort of classic um, detritivores and they look like little root beer candies or something um, but you can see if you look really closely around them that this distortion is uh, little cilia these little these little things look like the root beer barrel candy like old hard candies and then you can see that sort of distortion that's around it is the little cilia so another thing that we've seen a lot of here it's nice when I um, can return to some of the things we've seen before especially the really cool ones like that dileptus and then I still remembered what it was so I'm going to give myself a little tiny pat on the back about that for remembering it because that for sure that it had slipped out. It's been a while since we've seen it. And there was a couple of them in here. That's the solid gastrotrach, uh, which, oh, and there's a little cymbella right there, diatom, and that's a sponge spicule right there in the middle. It's a little piece of a sponge. That is oscillatoria. This big thing here, you can see it's actually moving a little bit. That's not just the slide drifting, that's actually oscillatoria. They can actually kind of move around a bit. Uh, even though it's a uh, cyanobacteria. <laughs> Ever met one that wasn't cool? Um, I don't know, Sweepy. Um, also, sorry, I didn't give you a shout out. I should give you one. Um, Pacific Plankton was here earlier and um, she usually does all my shouting outs. Not that I'm lazy, but got two hands running the microscope and usually my eyes are running the microscope as well. That's another dileptus. That's the same thing we were just seeing. This third one. You can see them in there. They look like little tiny worms, but when you get up close, they look really much more interesting. And there's some big paramecium-like ciliate. scrounging for food. There's another one up here. That one's sitting kind of still. We might actually be able to get a close-up of them before it zooms off. There's a couple of them right here in our field of view, actually. There you can see very clearly all the little hairs. Do you see them right on the tip? Way, way out here. There's a bunch of little hairs, but they're actually all the way around their body, and you can see that they're creating a current with them. So just like everything else that we see that has cilia, um, and they use them to pull stuff towards themselves and then eat on it. And I think this is stuff coming out, actually. I think that's waste product coming out that hole. It's a pretty cool little view of that. And it's just sitting there, so I'm going to try to take it up to 20. Oh, there goes a gastrotrick in and out of our field of view. Cool little thing. Let's see if I take it up to 20. I can do it without them getting disturbed. Ah, there we go. Now you'll get a really clear view of it. That seemed in a little too close. There, now you can really see those hairs. Also, it just moves a little bit and it's gonna be out of our screen. So it's super hard for me to keep up with once they start moving. <laughs> yeah, it's like a little secret world and it's just between you and us, right? You and me and uh, people who watch the stream. We get to see all these cool little things in our secret little place. 
Here's a cool little diatom. Do you see why I'm fascinated by diatoms? Look at how intricate that is. It's a Cirilla. And just a couple of drops of water. And all these things are in there. And the smaller you go, you just see more and more. There's more little things at every level. So even though we zoomed in, we doubled our magnification, you can still see that there's even more stuff here that's crawling around or moving around. So we looked at that oscillatory at full size. <laughs> the secret words. Uh, if you just say words that you would normally respond to, you'll find a bunch of them. Oops, did you see that? That little guy just went right through our field of view. Oops, there it is. It's snorfling around for food. It's another ciliate. That is not the, the dileptus that we saw earlier. That's something else. You can see the hairs all the way around its body, though. Just like all the ciliates, it's how they get around. Hey, Jolkson, how are you doing? Uh, this is Clear Lake as in Clear Lake, Iowa, not California. Oh, you know what? Did I do this ever? Did I do a sweepy? I guess I can fix that for you. Eventually I will. I'm doing okay. Thanks for dropping in, Jolkson. We're looking at a new place, a whole new site for me, but one that my graduate students have been looking at the fossil record for um, about a year now. Addie's been looking at them, and we've seen some of them on SEM before as well. Um, she was looking at some material from this site. I want to do this to try to get that contrast a little bit better. There you go. Good to see that guy come swimming through a little bit more clearly. We're looking at a secret world. Also, um, we're looking for secret words. Secret words that set off reactions in my channel. That's a little gastro trick right there. You see, he's just also just sort of snorfling around through things. Oops. Perfect. There he is. See the little forked tail? That usually is a dead giveaway that you're looking at a gastro trick. Kind of look like a caterpillar body with a little forked tail. I think they're super cute. They move around really quickly. We saw a bunch of um, uh, these testate amoeba skeletons in the deeper water. You can see they're also here in the shallow water. That's what that reddish thing there in the center is. Oops. another testate amoeba skeleton. I don't see the actual amoeba, just like the other ones. It could be they're out of season. Could be that they aren't around at this moment. A little guy right there that's spinning. We saw him when we first zoomed in. There you go. He's got his little toe attached to something. And then he's just spinning and spinning. Let's see if I can get that. <sighs> of course. So he's got a little trail of junk behind him, so I know exactly where he is. Getting him to sit well, in the middle of the chair. is impossible, though. There you go. Got 
at him for a second. See how it spins around? Again, covered with little hairs. And this one's basically attached by that little spine down there so that it can spin and try to draw food towards itself. <laughs> cool as one. Uh, thank you for the follow, Master. Got him kind of spinning around this pile of junk he's dragging around with him. It's another tested amoeba skeleton right there, I think. That one's like a light bulb or like a long skinny one. Also does not look occupied. There's some oscillatory. You can see it's still moving. As I mentioned, um, some of the cyanobacteria can also move around a bit. That's where they got that name, oscillatoria. Because it looks like they're kind of moving back and forth in the water. And they probably are a little bit. There's a diatom. Let's see how much smaller the diatoms are than most of the other things that we're looking at, which is why I usually have to look at them at a thousand times magnification. And I usually can't do that when we're looking at stuff in wet mounts. Um, because the oil immersion objective that I have makes it very difficult. That is a Uh, dileptus again. It's the same as we saw before, a little dileptus. See how they sort of swing that little proboscis or trunk around and then stuff stuff into their little mouth, which is basically right at the edge of that on the underside. Pretty cool. And that's uh, that little globe that you see over here is pediastrum. It's a type of um, algae as well. There's a little collops going by. So a bunch of little tiny zooplankton in here. Alright, well, I got a little bit of a late start and didn't want to spend it all night here in the... Uh, almost got it. Um, streaming, looking at this stuff, because I probably could. Um, so I think we'll just look around a little bit more and then uh, we'll probably go raid Pacific Plankton. Because I know she started her stream. Try to zoom in on one of these guys. Get them nice and big for you. Going the wrong way. There you can see all the structure, the stuff moving around on the inside. Some of that's probably food, things that it's ingested. You see how they spin the little hairs though? Move them around. <laughs> Watching all of the streams before bed is nice. Um, Thank you. I think their microscopic organisms are super interesting. And like I said, it's really sort of a delight to be able to bring it, share it to people, share it with people. I think that a lot of them are just mesmerizing think about all this little tiny stuff that's in here that's doing this that we never even think about or see because we just don't have access to that world that they're in very easily we definitely have a size bias that's you know as a result of our scale we tend to only care about things that are in our size range. You know, if I told you that a diatom was about to go extinct, 
everybody would be like, so what? But if I told you it was a fish or a bear, then you'd be very concerned about it. Polar bears get all the attention, um, rightfully so, because most of the algae just goes unnoticed. And a consequence of that is, you know, if I want to write a grant about looking into research in diatoms, one of the problems I have is it's hard to sell it to people as something that they should be concerned with because they just don't care about the scale. No matter how interesting or intricate or important it is, um, it's invisible, so they just, they don't seem to care about it as much. If you tell them, oh, these are things that fish eat, suddenly everybody cares, though, because it's like, uh, they care about fish. Right? They find some sort of connection with that. This world's really inaccessible to them. So they just don't care about it. Stick with Chris Oops. and Giannis and let's um, let's go see what Pacific Plankton's up to, and um, I'll probably be back tomorrow night with a little bit more from these samples. And also, we collected some material from um, another lake, um, Marl Lake. Uh, was that yesterday? It seemed like a really long time ago. I think it was yesterday uh, as well. So I have a whole bunch of material that we can explore and see what else is in it. Really, I want to look around a little bit more in these sediment samples. So um, see what else I can find. Thanks everybody for hanging out. I know it was short, um, but uh, short and sweet sometimes are the best. And um, like I said, I'll probably be back tomorrow night. We'll take a look at some more stuff. And until then, let's go take a look at what Pacific Plankton is up to. And I'm sure she's looking at some really cool stuff that's also moving around and wiggling around in um, the samples from um, San Francisco Bay. So, cool. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the follow, um, Master360X. Uh, we really appreciate that. And we'll catch everybody next time. Diatoms attack. Hello, you came just in time for the.